Hey, Mark. Well, that's a great... Dan? <laughs> hey, this is Mark with The Practical Still. I'm here with Dan Cavallari, and we're in a little bit of a goofy mood, but it involves whiskey, so I, I think it's okay. <laughs> I think it's the best What do you think, Dan? Is it okay? Oh, I think it's lovely. I think it's lovely. And, you know, what better way to be goofy than with a little E.H. Taylor? Yeah, so tell me about that. I haven't seen. I've, I've got one of those stuffed in a cabinet downstairs, but is that the yeah. small batch or a single barrel? What you got there? This is this is a single barrel. So you know, we had a, a little Fourth of July gathering, and uh, I wanted to open something nice, and I had this forever. And this is one of those bottles where it's like you know, you had said a long time ago that you know the difference between the single barrel and the small batch didn't seem like much of a difference to you. Both both excellent, by the way. Uh, huh? And I wanted to test it for myself finally, and so I did. And the verdict is: I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, it's fantastic. But it's, uh, yeah, I can't tell any difference between the single barrel and the small batch. I, you I know, and it could so. there could certainly be a difference. You could certainly mm-hmm. run up on just an amazing barrel. But I, that was. You know, and, and even before they cost what they cost now, when I when I would routinely buy the small batch for thirty or thirty five bucks, and the single barrel yeah. was fifty, even then I thought it's not that much of a difference in price, but the, I just don't yeah. see much of a difference in the whiskey. I too am Love. on a single barrel though. Yeah, I'm on a Russell's Reserve. Ooh, that's the Russell's great. Reserve action, single barrel that rye. Really yeah, delicious. That stuff is delightful. Delightful. Yeah, you uh, speaking of speaking of delightful, Mark, you just got back since, from, since we had uh, no real topic. <laughs> what are we going to talk about? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not going to just talk about uh, pop, popping corks. You uh, you just got back from a trip to your to the the motherland to your homeland. Uh, you just got back from Alabama and uh, did a little shopping, a little shopping for for mm-hmm. some whiskeys. Uh, what 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 was different about it? Like Colorado is such a weird place to shop for whiskey. What, what was different about shopping for whiskey in Alabama? Oh, first of all, if he, if anybody's out there and you don't have a bottle of Russell's Reserve single barrel rye, go get it. Get it's some. everywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's seventy five bucks. A little pricey, but holy yeah. smoke, is it good? It the difference. Really good. So the the big difference is um, Alabama's a control state. Colorado's mm-hmm. not. And, uh, and in, in quick little definition, the control state means the state, you know, the government controls the distribution of whiskey at retail and wholesale. Uh, and they've got their own little stores, little ABC stores. Mm-hmm. And um, it doesn't mean they can't have privately owned liquor stores, and they do in Alabama, but everything costs a lot more because they, <laughs> they got to buy it from the state and they're in competition with the state. Yeah. Um, so there's there's pluses and minuses. Um, you know, I think on the plus side, in Alabama or any control state, if you can find a bottle of whiskey, uh, it's they're not going to price gouge you. They just price it the way they're supposed to price it. And um, mm-hmm. it used to be uh, it cost a lot more in Alabama. You know, a bottle here, a bottle there, it costs more in Alabama. Now it's not the case. Prices are pretty comparable. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's. The thing that always killed me, because you know, when, when we lived in Alabama, we lived about four hours from where all this whiskey's produced in Kentucky. There's just stuff there you'd never see on a shelf that just kind of laid around out here when I got here. I couldn't believe back then there was Weller was just you know, one, you know old, old Weller Antique 107, Special Reserve, the E.H. Yeah. Taylor, just kind of just hanging out on the shelf. I, I mean, the day I'd find that stuff in Alabama was celebration day. Yeah. <laughs> um, weird, weird. So this, this trip, and you know, I sent you a picture cause I walked the very first little store I went into just trying to grab something before we went to a friend's house for dinner. It was yeah. four bottles of Booker's just, just oh, sitting God. on the shelf. Oh, yeah. We hadn't dream. seen, I haven't seen a bottle of Booker's <laughs> myself. On the shelf. Yeah. I I mean, it's been months since, and, it, and when you do, it's a hundred dollars or $120. More than that. It was that just now. sitting there for 89 bucks. Oh, oh my God. No, I, the last time uh, I saw it on a shelf, it was two hundred and fifty bucks. The last yeah, two times, crazy. in fact, yeah. yeah, garbage. No, you can't do that. So, Sorry. you know, I could not leave those bottles on the shelf, even though we were traveling. <laughs> and, and and obviously, it's not not right or fair, or it's frowned upon to ship whiskey around. But you can you can check bags, and I think the rules for the airlines is five liters. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, and I'm not saying that's how those two bottles of Booker's got back to your house or not from Alabama, <laughs> but um, they, just they got appeared. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm happy I, uh, with their took, arrival. <laughs> yeah. I took one of those bottles and just, uh, I just <laughs> kind of carted it around the whole time and splashed yeah. a little in my morning coffee when we went back. Yeah. We stayed in New Orleans for a few days too, which is a yeah. lovely, lovely town. And, uh, you know, shared some with everybody I saw that wanted some bourbon and, Mm-hmm. It was wonderful just to cart a bottle of, and that's the tag along batch. Uh, yeah. It was 20, uh, 2021. Was it dash two? I don't remember. Dash two, yeah. I have it right behind me. Hold delicious. Uh, oh, yeah. It's delicious. Dash two. So, um, tag along batch. You know, yeah. I, I came of age as a whiskey drinker, and of course, I grew up in Alabama. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't know that I really realized until I got into whiskey that whole control state thing. And it's it's quite frustrating in some some ways. Now they do their allocations different. So that what used to happen was once a year when it was Pappy allocation or BTAC allocation, they would designate certain ABC stores in each town to be the allocation stores. And then we, the whiskey geeking public, would queue up uh, as soon as they closed on Saturday evening because there's no – the state stores aren't open on Sundays in Alabama. And they wouldn't let us camp in the parking lot (laughs) until they were closed. (laughs) Yeah, uh, we camp out. There was always that one person that uh, controlled everything. So they'd show up right at six o'clock, and they'd have numbers, usually back to fifty or hundred. They wouldn't try and number everybody, but you'd come up, sign your name to your spot in line. That dude would hand you a number, and that was your number. And yeah. uh, so we'd camp until Monday morning when the store opened back up, and then they'd yeah. let you pick one bottle from the super allocated one bottle from the middle allocated and one bottle from the, it's not really allocated, but we don't see it that often table. So you could buy three bottles or four bottles. Sometimes it'd be two off the third table. And that that was how I first got, I got my first old Rip Van Winkle 10 that way. Cause I was 49th in line, I think that year. (laughs) Oh my gosh. And that's how we get allocated whiskey. But I paid 59.99 for that bottle of old rip because oh, that's stop. the retail price of it. Stop. Now you're just hurting um, me. Now you're just- so that's the upside. That was years ago. That was 2000. <laughs> I don't remember 2012 or 13. The last, that first time I got that bottle. Um, but that's the upside of the allocated. So the downside is they don't have store owners that are passionate <laughs> about the hobby. Uh, so they don't really care. The yeah. people in the store just, they, I mean, sometimes they do. Like it's when I was down there sale. this time, yeah, because the way they do the allocation now is they don't do it that way. So that was the story I was going to tell. They have it's, – it's just ongoing. So I think it's once a month or so they send a list out, and it's got whatever they've got at whatever store it's going to be at. And it's going to be Tuesday at, at, at 10 when we open. Go get it. Get and it. that's how yeah. they do it now. So there's not any special time of year. Well, there, I mean, it is because the whiskey happens at a time of year, but they don't they – don't, save it all up. They don't do lotteries. Mm-hmm. You just have to walk in and get it. So there's, yeah. you know, th- there's an upside to that and that there's no favoritism. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure it's Alabama. Uh, so somebody's paying somebody to get, to get something. Yeah. That's just the way it works down there. Uh, but I, ostensibly I have, it's a fair system. I have a lot of questions just based off of <laughs> the, the conversation we've had so far. First of all, I, so I grew up in Connecticut which is not a control state. Um, so you can buy, certainly not Alabama. No, no, definitely not. Um, but I, I mean, I remember uh, package stores. We used to call them packies. Um, mm-hmm. And I had never heard the term ABC store until I moved to Maine, which is a control state. But you can get you can get booze in the grocery store. I mean, it's it doesn't. You don't have to go to an ABC store. I have no idea what the, what ABC stands for in this. Uh, Alcoholic beverage control. Aha. Uh-huh. I just learned something. See, because, like, you know, I've never really lived in a place where that was a thing. Mm. Um, and and it, w- it always baffled me that, you know, you would call it an ABC store. Um, what is, is that what you would call it when you were like, I'm going to mm-hmm. run to the ABC That's what it store? says on the building. It says ABC. Yeah. I don't know if it's a store, but it says ABC okay. on the front of the building. Because we had package stores. And we would call it the packy. <laughs> You know, but really, you could, you could buy beer anywhere. It didn't really matter. And, and whiskey, I don't think whiskey well, now, was in the grocery stores. Well, now remember, they, they, do, they do differentiate. So there could be control yeah. states for all alcoholic beverages. There could right. be spirits control states. Spirits. So in Alabama, it's a spirit control 
Right. But you buy you buy your beer and your wine in grocery stores there, mm-hmm. which was freaky when I came to Colorado because you got to buy beer and wine in the in the liquor store. And the, well, not we anymore. Had, they had not anymore. They changed that, and, and they had beer in the grocery stores here, but it was the the low alcohol version, which yeah. I think the idea was to protect retailers to let the mm-hmm. let the liquor store small businesses have that business. Yeah, uh, which is admirable. But but that's the way Alabama works. You buy your wine and your beer in grocery stores. They do not mm-hmm. sell spirits in grocery stores in Alabama. They sell it only in ABC stores. But oddly, we do have package stores, yeah. and they call them package stores. But if it's if you buy a bottle of whatever that's forty dollars at the ABC store, it'll be fifty five or sixty dollars in the package store. It makes you wonder why would you? <laughs> why Wait, would is, you there, just, is there a difference between what's a package store then? <laughs> it's now they in the package stores I they sell so they, they'll sell beer, they'll sell wine, they'll sell spirits. They can uh-huh. sell everything, and, and most of them will sell uh, cigars and other things too. Uh, okay. But you you. At least the impression when we were younger was you got a better selection. Somehow, I guess they could order things that the ABC didn't want to stock. Gotcha. Uh, and that's when when high gravity beer came along and the craft beer movement came. That's where you found that. So grocery stores didn't care about fourteen percent ABV yeah. <laughs> beers. You got those in the Bud package Light, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So and, I, and I guess- when you know, so so when allocation. The, the idea of allocation came along and whiskey geeks and the, and the whiskey market exploded. There was those pluses and minuses. And I, and I would go to uh, package stores because, I mean, they would get stuff that either the ABC store didn't want to stock. I mean, I remember stopping at one called Windmill Beverages right on the county line between Madison County and Limestone County in North Alabama because Limestone County – is dry still is to this day, I believe. Mm-hmm. Some of the cities have gone wet, but the county line was where all the little package stores accumulated because <laughs> you could just drive down to the county line, step over the county line, <laughs> right? <laughs> get, but I used to stop in there because one day, just on a whim, I went in there and there were four bottles. And goodness, I wish I had saved at least one of them. It was the it was two labels ago, one or two labels ago for Old Weller Antique. There was four of them sitting there, yeah, for twenty eight dollars a piece. Or twenty three dollars a piece. I can't remember. Uh, of course, they all. I left one because you don't want to be that person. That yeah, no, I want to be but, that. Person. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a weird thing. There's these little package stores, and I have. Of course, there's more package stores. They have better coverage, and there's not mm-hmm. very many ABC stores. So in my hometown of Mobile, Alabama, I think there's four, maybe five ABC stores in a town of four hundred thousand people. Yikes! Um, so maybe you don't want to drive six miles to get to the ABC store and when all you really want is a bottle of uh, taco vodka. <laughs> you just sure. roll into the back of the store and get it. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, some of the... Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, so, I mean, what what is... What, here in Colorado, we're kind of experiencing this, like, um, overwhelming demand for, for whiskey and, and it's becoming a big hobby. Did you get the sense that there... I mean, like, I've I've yet to go into a a store and and have that magical moment where I just find something awesome just sitting there on the shelf. Um, and I, and I wonder if it's because of just how many people are out there hunting for, for stuff in Colorado. Do you get that sense that it's the same down in where you were in Alabama or is it, yeah. Is it a little bit more normalized? I get the sense, maybe, maybe the magnitude is different just because the population difference. Yeah. I mean, again, mobiles, 350 or 400,000 people, yeah. you know, the greater Denver areas, gigantic yeah uh, but they can still they they spotted me the staff spot they knew what i was <laughs> and one of them walked up and said it's it's over here and he pointed behind the counter where they stack all that week that monthly allocation stuff so yeah, oh, okay yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought that was how that works i'm not i was from here but i'm not here he goes, so he explained it to how it worked and oddly nothing on the allocation board was desirable really I mean, there was really? some barrel bourbon. There was a few different whistle pigs. It was all stuff mm. that we can go get pretty much when we want here. Sure. But out on the normal shelf, there was Booker's. There was as George Dickel bottled and bond as far as the eye could see. <laughs> there was all this other stuff that we just don't see that often here. Oh, my gosh. Um, and I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know that you have a better chance in Alabama because small markets means smaller distribution. So I, mm. I don't know that proportionately it really changes. 
but when you do find stuff there, or if you're active chasing those lists, um, you know, you do get to buy the stuff at retail. They don't, sure. they don't mark it up. So, mm-hmm. but I do have some friends in Alabama that are, that are actively, they will always let me know when the list comes out and what's on it. There's mm-hmm. really rarely, except in, in the season, you know, except in the fall when all the good stuff's coming, there's rarely anything that we can't just get here. I mean, every once in a while they'll have something like a, an Elijah Craig 18, but it's never, it's never there when they get there. Interesting. Um, so we actually, I can't, so you, I can't imagine with the popularity of whiskey, I can't imagine politics that getting in the way. Politics gets into everything in, in the yeah. South. There's, they're just, somebody's getting that whiskey for it. It's yeah. the shelf, I'm sure. Sure. So, so we actually get a better, would you say we get a better selection here in Colorado? If, when I moved here in 2017, absolutely. Yeah. I was shocked at what was on shelves here that I would rarely see. And, and again, E.H. Taylor, small batch. I got I, The yeah. whole time I lived in Alabama as a whiskey person, which was probably six or seven years that I was into whiskey, mm-hmm. I bought one bottle of E.H. Taylor small batch. Yeah. Or maybe two. And yeah. a couple of yeah. the single barrels. Not many. When I got here, you go to Hazel's in Boulder, there'd be two cases of small batch sitting on the shelf in 2017. Mm-hmm. There'd be, typically I could... Uh, I'd find once in a while I'd find Old Weller Antique 107, mm-hmm. but Special Reserve in every store on the shelves. Yeah. And you can um, still Special Reserve. You can still find fairly easily around. I, yeah, I don't not see easily. It that often, so maybe I mean, I'm not I, looking in the right place. But I bought you know I bought those Kentucky Owl Rise. I still have one of the batch ones. They were just sitting on shelves. Yeah, here that, and I've yeah. never seen that down there. I did see so some E.H. Taylor small batch just the other day. I didn't buy it. Well, but it sixty-five bucks or seventy bucks. I'm just not. Oh, it was more. It was more than that. <laughs> yeah, that's not. It, that's yeah. a thirty-five. To, in my head, maybe it's just because that's where I bought everything. I've never paid more than thirty-five dollars for that, True. and I haven't bought one in years. <laughs> so, yeah. but that in my head, that's a. And I've got one. I need to open. I've got one. I need to, I need I, to rem- I mean, actually, I you pay. had one a while back. I did. Yeah, and I would pay. It, I would pay. So I paid. I got lucky with these two bottles. I didn't pay very much for these. The, the single barrel and the small batch. Um, I, I paid a total of $60 for both of them. Um, mm. But now, I mean, if I saw either one of these on the shelf for 60 bucks, I would grab it for sure. No. Um, the last the last one I saw just a few days ago, of not the single barrel, the small batch, was $120. Nope. No, Super nope, nope, nope. nope. Even, at, even at 50 yeah, uh, I'll just buy a Kentucky uh, Wild well, Turkey Kentucky Spirit. Yeah, I'll buy. I mean, there's just all sorts of stuff I'll buy for fifty bucks before I pay that for the small bag. I I sure do like E. H. Taylor though, so I would I would pay fifty to sixty bucks for it. Don't no problem. I'm gonna say no because that's my answer right now. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. not gonna tell you it won't change one day. Right, but right. Uh, <laughs> same same we, with stuff like Eagle Rare. You know, Eagle yeah. Rare in my head's a twenty five dollar bottle. Sure, I'll pay thirty, mm-hmm. but I'm never gonna argue over five bucks, but it's just not a fifty dollar bottle of whiskey to me. No, no. I I mean I paid there's one over my shoulder here, I paid thirty five for that, and that's the most I've ever paid for Eagle Rare. You know, but it's if good. you were gonna I mean, pay fifty really if you were gonna pay fifty or sixty for something, wouldn't you pay it for Eagle Rare before each Taylor? I mean it's ostensibly it's it's mm. one of the two Buffalo Trace bourbon mash bills. It's a 10-year age-dated product versus who knows. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the E.H. Taylor's bottled in bond, but... I feel like the E.H. Taylor... I mean, I like Eagle Rare a lot. Eagle Rare, though, to me, I... Um, I don't know how to say this because I know you sure do love Eagle Rare. <laughs> I like Eagle I, Rare a lot. Yeah. I mean, I like Eagle Rare a lot, too. I actually do think I like the E.H. Taylor better. Um and I think that just comes back to sort of some of the tasting notes, you know, like palate again, I'm like, sure. I love those. I love that big caramel and vanilla and E.H. Taylor has that in spades. Um, so I, I don't know. There's just something about E.H. Taylor that I really, I, man, if, if I was paying $35 for this bottle, I would, this is all I would drink. <laughs> Although well, I don't know, maybe rare breed too, I don't, but uh, <laughs> I did just zip through a bottle of that. So I guess I could shut up. But, um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, if, if both of these bottles were on the shelf, the E.H. Taylor for 35 and I don't know, the, the Eagle Rare for 30, we'll say, 
would I pay the extra five bucks for the each Taylor? Oh yeah, I would. Well, that's I'd a probably buy question. both. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a different that's a different question because I think the the correct answer is you buy both. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't you don't discriminate. The the question though is, if one of those bottles is going to fifty or sixty, like why is an E H Taylor small batch? 60, 70, 80, 90 bucks. Why? Mm. There is no logical. It's not. Geekies have pushed it that far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I will just, if I I walk in and there's E.H. Taylor on the shelf at 60 bucks, small batch, and there's a bottle of Eagle Rare sitting there for 30 or 35, no qualms. I'm just buying the Eagle Rare and walking out. And I have to go look. I don't don't remember if they're both, uh, if they're both batch, uh, mash bill one or two. Well, okay, so that in that in that case, yeah, I, w- I would grab the the Eagle Rare because, you know, just thinking about budget, I mean, Eagle Rare is such a fantastic bottle for anywhere under thirty. It's me on anywhere thirty five bucks and under. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's it's a buy easily. Um, e. H. Taylor small batch. I don't know. I don't. I I still feel like yeah. I would buy it for sixty. Like I think if if it was sixty on the shelf, they're and both I saw they're Eagle both Rare. the they're both mash bill number one. Yeah, Man, so they I don't both know. start live. They come out of the still. Could have been either one. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, now, I don't know, man. They go off and do different things, and and but who knows? I don't even know how many warehouses Eagle uh, sure you uh, Buffalo know. Tracer size racks guys probably a pile of them. But yeah. Well, I also love that the could, Taylor it changes. Bottle is, it, it's, it certainly should be different whiskey by the time yeah. it gets in the bottle. The E.H. Taylor bottle is also nine feet tall, which I really like. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't care for the uh, tall. I, don't, I like the shorter bottles. They're, they're easier for my storage system. <laughs> they, well, they hide I, better. <laughs> yeah. No, I have I have many storage areas, so I can, I can yeah. find a place for everything. I don't know. Yeah. That's a good question. But I, I really, I you know, I opened this yesterday, and I just, it is so Fantastic, and I opened it with uh, a friend of mine who, you know, he's sort of it wasn't into, me. Wasn't you? No. Uh, it will most likely be you next time, though. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, no, but he's he's sort of like growing into whiskey now, and like really enjoying uh, learning about whiskeys and tasting different ones. And he he was really impressed with this one, and it was like the first thing he said was. Wow, that's vanilla and caramel, vanilla and caramel, and and I think to me yeah. that's the big thing with E. H. Taylor is like if you're looking for that full mouth flavor, the mouth coating feel. I mean, it has that. Um, yeah. But I, no but doubt. you know, going back to what you had told me before, the difference between the single barrel and the small batch. You know, if the single barrel was on the shelf for sixty, and the uh, or excuse me, the the small batch was on the shelf for sixty, and this was on the shelf for eighty five, I know exactly which one I would pick. I'd get the 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 small batch because it's. It tastes almost identical. Yeah, and I'm not um, suggesting I've had hundreds of both to 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 give you a great sample size. Right. I'm just telling you, um, I've had I don't know a dozen or two of both. Well, a dozen or two of small batch and ten or twelve of the single barrel over the years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I just, I've never been. I've never sipped the single barrel and go, dang. I need to always buy single barrels of this. Right, right, right. It just isn't that big a difference. I mean, if I saw either one on the shelf, I would probably consider buying it. <laughs> I don't know. I man, lately, really I'm struggling it. with that. I, I'm just struggling yeah. with the price of stuff. And 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 I Same. get mad at myself when I don't take a step back and say, okay, what am I really looking at here? Yeah. Uh, well, am, you've am been I in the game in, a long time. I mean that that's part of it too is you have this perspective of of having bought all this stuff when it was super cheap and you know it was easy to get a bottle that I would I would I like I would die to get some of these bottles that you just bought for 25 bucks on the shelf you know 10 12 years ago <laughs> you know yeah um, the game's but, changed but now I don't know I hope I'm better than that I hope I'm cuz cuz I'm getting mad at myself in the moment when I pay too much, or I don't think about an alternative because that's part of what we want to help people understand is there are sure. alternatives. Mm-hmm. Uh, say, you know, Blanton's is a good example. Mm-hmm. If Blanton's was fifty dollars, I I wouldn't even hesitate. Sixty, I wouldn't even hesitate. Right? Mm-hmm. I, I think the most I've ever paid for Blanton's is sixty three dollars, and it, I yeah. still have nightmares that I paid that much for Blanton's. <laughs> but fifty, sixty bucks, I do it in a heartbeat. But then I back up and go, should I do that? Because, right. yeah, it's smash bill number two, I think, and Eagle Rare's smash bill number one. 
there's not that big a difference in them, mm-hmm. frankly, in the taste. And I got, I mean, yeah. still I could buy Eagle Rare for 35 bucks. It's three proof points less, but it's a 10-year age dated product. Mm-hmm. I can't taste three proof points. Right. Well, but, but I think we've also, I mean, we've talked a lot about this. I mean, we have our regular bottles that we buy, right? And what they're usually yep. in that, you know, anywhere from, from $15 to $45, $50, right? And mm-hmm. those are old reliables, right? We'll keep buying those because they're just so good. We talk, we've talked about them over and over again, right? Like Rare Breed is, is a perfect example of that. Yep. Um, always reliable. Any of the Russell's stuff has always been fantastic. It's affordable for the most part. Uh, the rise is a little, a little pricey, but, um, it is yeah, price. it's, it, oh, it's it, good. It, is, it is really good. <laughs> but so I don't, I mean, you know, when you, you look at my collection and we look at your collection and I would say that the vast majority of the bottles on my shelf are like inexpensive drinkers because that's what we do. Right. Sure. Dude. You know, every once in a while, <laughs> shut up, Mark. There's enough bookers <laughs> back there to ship lap your garage with the boxes. If you break them down, that's, that's why I keep buying. Sure, them. They're I mean, all ship lap the drinkers. Yeah. <laughs> um, I said the majority, I didn't say all, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it is nice to have like the every once in a while bottle. Right. And so how do you buy those? How do you choose those? You know, like the, if I'm going to buy a hundred dollar bottle, that to me is like, that's, that's not something it's I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, but you, you do, I mean, as a, as a whiskey enthusiast, you get to that point where you're like, I want to try something a little more nicer so yep. what or i guess a little more not even nicer the nicer is not the right word right like just um you want to try one of those rare ones or the harder to find ones or they're a little more expensive and see what makes the difference right yeah um i forgot where i was going with that but uh, but but well, the I bottom think, line I think is a good, taylor's delicious is, <laughs> <laughs> well i think a good place to go with that is when you get to that point you want to spend a little bit more and know what you're getting into yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Don't just spend for the sake of spending. Yeah, because because I, I promise you, I promise, promise, promise you, and you're going to be tempted to say, well, that's a $120 bottle. It must be great. I promise you the enjoyment of the whiskey is not related to the price tag anymore. Right. We right. are not living in reality. Mm-hmm. E.H. Taylor, mm-hmm. off-the-shelf single-barrel whiskey is not worth, and, and I'm, I have an economics degree. Things are worth what people will pay for them. Yeah. It's not worth $120. You have you have foolishly spent your money if you spend $120 on an E.H. Taylor off the shelf mm-hmm. single barrel. And you for yeah. sure have if you, if you do it with the small batch. Yeah. Um, well, I, so I will say this. The trick is to spell, know. I can I can spell math and I'm drinking E.H. Taylor and I can tell you it is delicious. <laughs> it, it is delicious. No, but, but I wouldn't is it $120 you're right, I wouldn't. delicious. No, of course no. not. I mean, so few it's things. Not. Oh, wait, wait. What'd you do? What'd you just do? Right. Oh, I had a little cork, cork action Damn here. You. I'm doing a, I'm doing a Dan pour here. Cause, cause why not? I'm freelance. I could do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. What do we start with? Oh, control states. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> so that first little store where I saw the, where I saw the four bottles of bookers. Yeah. The entire American whiskey shelf mm-hmm. was four shelves tall, I believe, and maybe 10 feet long. Okay. So okay, not, so not huge. tiny. Yeah. No. Now, there were some gems in there. Again, yeah. there was, I mean, I could. I didn't even count how many cases of George Dickel bottled and bond they sure. unboxed and sat there. Sure. There was the, there was the bookers. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a whole lot else. Mm. So uh, it was nice. And, and frankly, the Booker's was ninety bucks. It wasn't like it was fifty five bucks sure. or anything, right? right. And, but ninety's so retail now. I think that yeah, so, it's retail now. But it's allocated. So what, that's the thing, right? Like, I keep going to shops well, here, and they say it's allocated. So is it just well, allocated here? Look, no. So there's a difference between allocated and releases. Hmm. Booker's is released three times a year. Every once in a while, four times a year, but it's released three times a year. It's coming. Yeah. So if they say it's allocated because it only comes out three times a year, they they've misappropriated a term. 
Sure. Booker's has always been a three time, a, a multiple, multiple time a year release since the day it came out in the eighties. Well, here's, here's where I'm confused. I mean, I've, I've gone to a few places, Hazel's among them, and the, those staff have actually used the term allocated saying well, Booker's is now allocated. Um, it, well, maybe it is. Maybe it is from the standpoint that they only get some based on things they sell or some other criteria right. and it's allocated right. to them. But Booker's right. comes out three times a year. It's and I, I mean, maybe, I know it's a limited release, I mean, but it's I, always I, been that way. Yeah, yeah. It's not I, like I mean, there was that. Yeah, I mean, I think it the is. very maybe I'm wrong, but I think the very first bottle of Booker's had a year and a dash and a number on it where it was the yeah. first release. It's been that way. Yeah, and maybe allocation means something different to them in that. You know they have to perform in some level to get that. Right. It's certainly right. I can I can assure you every store in in at least in this state is whatever Booker's comes in the door it's sitting someplace hidden in the back it doesn't mm-hmm. just show up on a shelf somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but control states you you know there's trade trade offs. I personally I prefer the way Colorado is. Um, mm. I never had a lot of luck getting highly sought whiskeys in Alabama. I don't have a lot of luck doing it here. I'm just not willing yeah. to do the things that sure. I'm not willing to do those and, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not doing it. And if if a store, you know, uh, your buddy Casey, at Spirits in Arvada, mm-hmm. he he seems to he he values his regulars. Mm-hmm. I think he kind of gets that the stuff we want to buy is not a big part of his revenue. The beer right. and the wine is what pays the bills. Mm-hmm. But he, uh, you know, I'd like to find somebody like that where I can yeah. direct my meager whiskey budget <laughs> too, and hopefully yeah. have some, some back and forth on that. But uh, yeah. I, I like being able to go to stores in Colorado and see the bigger selection because they're, they're incented to do that. You know, they're, yeah. they're trying to bring shoppers in. They're trying to gain a clientele and mm-hmm. having a big wonder, variety does that. I wonder what Colorado was like, you know, what, 10 or 15 years ago. So for those of you who don't know, Colorado is sort of, gone through this massive population boom in the last decade or so. And I wonder, you know, I I wasn't, I was buying whiskey then, but I wasn't buying the way I do now. And I wasn't shopping for, for certain things. I was just going to the store and buying whiskey. Um, so I wonder how much things have changed here just as a result of the population influx. I mean, these bottles that are going crazy in price and this huge community all of a sudden of, of whiskey drinkers. I mean, was it like this 10 years ago? I mean, I just can't imagine it was. Um, well, especially everything's since, changed. Yeah. Everything's well, changed. It, it, I can't imagine it didn't change here, but. Yeah. And know, I think COVID I also just made things go crazy too. I mean, look at lumber, right? Like I just, I bought three studs, three pine warped studs uh, from Home Depot and they were $8 a stud where a year and a half ago I was paying $2. So it's not exclusive to, to whiskey. Um, but I just, I wonder if, if Colorado is also unique in the sense that it did have that population boom, which a drove up prices and B gave us the, the, the selection that we're kind of spoiled with, you know, that you can go to Hazel's and that wall of whiskey is what 40 feet long, you know? And <laughs> so there's a lot there. walls. Yeah, yeah. There's walls. That yeah, back yeah. wall is 30 feet long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and there's five there's shelves high. Has court. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 that. Then they've got. I mean, their little glassed-in special cases. Mm-hmm. There's got to be 120 bottles in that. And then there's yeah, the Scotch still- walls, kind of small, but it's packed. I don't know. Yeah, you know, you just you know, you it's won't be- see. I'll, I'll tell you this, and I don't know about all control states because I've only ever lived in one one control state. Yeah, they're the biggest store in Alabama, and I lived in two of the three biggest cities in Alabama. Mm-hmm. The biggest shelves in Alabama are nothing like they're they're two thirds maybe, but they're nothing wow. like what you see at Hazel's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean I think uh I think Colorado's got an interesting thing going on and I wonder if it's sort of a um like a hyperbole of what's happening everywhere else, you know, like Colorado. I don't know. I, I think every control. town's a little different, but yeah. I think that uh in the grand scheme of things if you if you watch other markets just from mm-hmm. a, you know, following whiskey geek standpoint, mm-hmm. we're not the craziest market in terms of price and, and availability. I mean, some, some of the New York markets are just nuts. They're paying sure. four and five and six times what we're paying for just yeah. standard stuff. Yeah. Same, same in the Bay area, same in LA. 
it's crazy. It's and yeah. DC, you know, Washington DC was a huge hub for that uh, before but COVID. Those are, so. I mean, but those are always sort of hubs for uh, overpriced everything. booze, yeah, yeah. and, and well, luxury yeah, and everything. Goods. Yeah. Yeah, I need a big yeah. metro like that for sure. I, you know, I think I think the moral of the story is uh, be grateful for what you have. Here in Colorado, we have better <laughs> selection, decent pricing. It's tough to get the nice stuff. In Alabama, you get great pricing if you can get it, but it's kind of nobody cares, so you're mm-hmm. at the whim of the market. Uh, and if you don't have any of that and you live in the very center of a state, well, you're kind of hosed. Otherwise, if you're close yeah. to the border, <laughs> drive across and you know, see what find you something see. you can live with. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. the biggest moral of the story is, I guess I don't really care because I'm telling you, I can find, I don't, I've not run into a situation yet. And we've traveled a lot around the country for work, gone mm-hmm. shopping to have stuff to drink while we're there for vacations, whatever places we live. I can find really enjoyable whiskey on any shelf. Yeah. Anywhere. No doubt. So I don't, I mean, look, I wish I finished off my 2019 George T. Stagg, the only bottle of BTAC I've ever gotten to buy. I saw that. I had a love hate relationship with that bottle. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that last sip, oh my God, it was delicious. Yeah. But I'm not chasing it. I got, yeah. this is really good. It's not as good, but it's close. It's really close. Yeah. And I yeah, can yeah. buy it whenever I want. So be See, grateful for what you got, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I got half a bottle of George T. Stagg 2020. So I'm pretty grateful half. for that. <laughs> I damn slow down till I get there. Hey man, I shared. That was the, <laughs> that was That's the right. problem. That yeah, was you did. Going. That's right. I've only you had like sharing. I. I think I've only had two full glasses of that. But yeah, but I wanted mm-hmm. I wanted people to experience it. That was what was so, so fun about that day was, and actually I was just over. So some of our friends, uh, Jacob and Tanya, who come over for our whiskey nights, mm-hmm. we were just over their house the other night, and uh, that we still talk about that bottle. I mean, it, <laughs> it's, it, it was a thing. So. You know, if you're going to spend... You even, and, when we were you know, hanging out with Lenny at Deerhammer, yeah. you brought that bottle. I did. He, he was did. excited to have a sip of that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was great. Sharing sharing is the right thing to do. Uh, yeah, sharing makes it taste better anyway. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we're back back, back in town. Yeah. Back to normal. We got a whiskey night coming up. Coming up. Uh, next week, week after next? Well, yeah, like a uh, yeah, week, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll everybody get your vaccinations and get back to hanging out with people. Yeah, and let me tell so you something refreshing. about vaccinations while we're here. Yeah. Uh, if I, and I do not have COVID now, if I didn't get COVID in New Orleans, <laughs> you the vaccines work. Yeah. Because <laughs> there is, there is a lack of give a, you know what? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. I just was shocked. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was my care. experience in Kansas a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, COVID's they just over, don't. Uh, it's not something they really give a sh- <laughs> rip about. <laughs> so, well, uh, anyway, well, I'm, I'm looking working. forward to next week and uh, and having our, our whiskey yeah. night. Maybe while you're here, we'll uh, record a little video and uh, do a little podcast and drink a little something. Yeah. Cool. All right, this is fun, Dan. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, finish your whiskey. I'll finish my whiskey. I'll see you in a week, whatever. If you get up this way, you know, espresso machine's always on. Stop by for a coffee. I'll be up this week. I'm stopping by. <laughs> there you go. I'm here all the all time. Right. Tip Does your waiter. Espresso your come bartender. with a uh, little, little shot of Booker's in the espresso, like like Alabama style. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I did Grand Meunier in it the other morning. Here, I did mm, double yeah. shot of espresso, little float of Grand Meunier on the top. Oh, yeah, delicious. What time delicious. is it? I'm coming over now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can take take 15 minutes to have it cranked yeah. up. And ready to go. It's perfect. Perfect timing. All right. Cheers, Dan. Enjoy cheers, it, Mark. All right.